Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. I hope my voice came in good and clear. Please invite your friends and let us do what we need to do for today. Education is very important and those who have no education, they have nothing. Uh, yesterday we spoke about a video made by a Muhammadan and he claimed that Jesus was not sent to the old world. And actually, this is not his claim. This is the claim from the Muslims for centuries and centuries. And there is always a question, you know, we need to ask ourselves. What is behind the claim? Why Muslims, they made those claims? You see, many of us, we, like, we, go, we go and we respond to it. But there is more important question from the response itself. Why that claim is made? You see, the Muslims, they believe supposedly that Isa or supposedly Jesus is a prophet so why they want you to believe that he was sent only to the jews what is exactly the problem when you are an antichrist what do you try the first thing to do you cannot say i am an antichrist because people will not listen to you for christ is being loved so what i would say i will try to strip christ from the best feature he can provide to you. Salvation to you, love to you, message to you. And now we make it limited in a small number of population, which is the Jews. And that's mean the Christians, they cannot go and teach and preach the gospel for someone he is not a Jew. You have to be a Jew only for Jesus was sent to the Jews. And here you see the hypocrisy of the Mohammedan the same as their prophet. Why Muhammad, who don't speak languages, he was sent to whole mankind, while the Messiah who speak languages, and not only that, even their books confirm, and we showed you yesterday, you can go and see the reference, that Jesus, he made his disciples speak languages of all the world, or whatever he sent them to. While Muhammad, he don't even speak his own language. He speak it, yes, but he don't know how to write, how to read. So he isn't qualified even to deliver the message to his own people. The insistent that Jesus was sent only to the Jews is just to kill Jesus again. They want to kill Jesus. So Jesus, go out of your life. Even though there is too many verses about Jesus saying that he'd been sent to the world, and the Bible says, like, for God loved the world, he sent his only begotten son. He loved the whole world. Even though the Bible speaks about there is no difference between a Greek, Hebrew, uh, uh, you know, slave, free and slave, still the Muslims, they insist. Even though the Quran, the stupid book of, the, of Muhammad, even call the Bible Injil, which is a Greek word. which again showing me the stupidity of the author of the Quran. So how you Muslims you say that Jesus was sent only to the Jews, yet his book is in a Greek language? Why you say Injil? Hmm? Why you Muslim you say Injil? You see the word in English, they say gospel, but in Arabic it says Injil, which is not a Hebrew word. Why Injil? So he is a messenger to the Jews, but yet his book is in Hebrew, in, in, in Greek. Hmm? So it's extremely easy actually to defeat all those claims. What is mean by begotten son? Well, God has a son, as simple as that. <laughs> Jesus is the son of God. <laughs> All right. Begotten here present that he is not, uh, not a created, you know, like uh, he's born. Yes, he's born, you know, but be before his birth was exist. This is why Jesus says before Abraham, I am. And he's born from women, but he exists before his birth. 
he's not created. The flesh can be created, but the Son of God is always exist. So uh, God have a son is very simple, that God have a son. You know, God, he present himself, I am God, I am in three person. If I want to tell God how that can be, well, how God can make a person go from death? Uh, explain to me now. You know, if you want to speak about the Muslim, they try to say to you, it's not logical, right? Well, is it logical that Mary, she was virgin? How come you, you put your logic suddenly in the side? Uh, and it's not important to be logical suddenly. Is it logical that Mary, she have a son, but he, she have no husband? And why? In Islam, there is no meaning for that. There is no meaning because any woman, she can say, I have a son and I am virgin. My mom, she can say that too. Can she say, she can say that in the front of my dad. <laughs> but, and who is going to prove this true or not? I mean, this, but you see, when the, the Islam is a stupid cult, they copy things, but when they copy it, it means nothing in their cult. In a Christianity, it makes a big difference for Jesus is son of God. He's not son of any man. That makes sense. That's what they believe, right? So when you say you are a Muslim and you believe that Jesus is a son of no man, that's not only stupid of you to believe in, because you just believe something doesn't make sense in your cult. If you want to believe in it, it means it makes sense only in Christianity for God. Is, who is the father of Jesus in Islam? Who is the Muslim now? Who is the father of Jesus in Islam? Any Muslim can tell us? They cannot. This is why they call him son of Mary. Have you ever heard a person his name son of Mary? You see, isn't it the Quran says call them by the names of their father? We cannot call a person by the name of his mother or anyone else. You have to call him by the name of his father. Who is the father of Jesus? Hmm? Any Muslim have a, any a clue? Let us go to the Quran and see what the Quran says about that. And this is here we will see that right away, the Muhammadan, they, when they deny Jesus, they are fighting Jesus. Uh, and the purpose of Muhammad is to make you run away from Jesus, not to listen to him. Chapter 33, verse number 5. Call them by the names of their fathers. It's an order from Allah. Correct? Do you see it? Call them by the name of their father. Who's saying that? Supposedly Allah. Okay. I want to call Jesus by the name of his father. Guys, don't forget to share the link around, please, and invite your friends in Facebook, etc. So we can have more audience. Right now we have only 600. You see here when we speak, we speak with knowledge. When they speak, they speak with anger and hatred. And that's why they speak foolishness. It's not allowed for a Muslim to call somebody by the name of anyone except his father. It's a sin. This is, this is what is justified in, this, in the sight of Allah. And now I'm going to follow this verse. So I want to call Jesus the son of who? A Muslim might say to you, well, Jesus is the same as Adam. Actually, the Quran says that Jesus is the same as Adam, which is proven to me that the one who made the Quran is not only, you know, he have a little tiny brain, he's a finito. Little, very small mosquito brain programmed because Adam and Aka uh, supposedly Isa 
they have nothing to share and we can prove that very easy and not only that the one who made the verse in the Quran is an idiot why look at this he's saying the similarity between Jesus before Allah is the same as of Adam he created him from dust and then he said to him be and he was but if you go and study the whole Quran, you will never find where Allah, he created Adam by saying to him, be. Never. The Quran says that Allah, he created Adam by fashioning a mud. First, you make a mud. As you see here, it says a dust, right? Okay. How you say to me, he created him from dust and he said to him, be, he was. It is dust. Did you say to the dust, be? No. It took Allah two days to create the dust and the earth. And four days to create everything in the top of the earth. And two days to create the sky and the earth and the heaven and the stars. Total is eight days. Contradiction for the Quran where it says in the many verses, it took Allah six days only. But if we go right now and search in the Quran, we will find. How Allah He created Adam. Chapter 15, verse number 29. When I fashioned him, I breathed into him. But how what he fashioned first? He made sounding clay and then he molded in a shape and then when he finished the modeling he breathed into it where is where he said it be so all of this in the other verses says he said be and it was but here it says that allah he mixed water with with, with dust he fashioned the clay into a shape and then he breathed into it do you see anywhere it says Allah he said be and it was nowhere stupid statement so if we go where Allah supposedly saying that Jesus is the same as Adam that is a stupid because neither Adam neither Jesus was created in the Quran by such a method where he said to him be and he was if we go to the story of Jesus, we will see that Allah, he sent his spirit and his spirit blow into Mary, breathe into Mary in her private part, which is very filthy. So where is being he was? Did Allah say to Jesus be and he was? No. Did Allah say be to Adam and he was? No. The Quran proved that. So when somebody, he make a statement and this statement does not check out with the rest of the statement, that is a proof to us that the one who made the Quran is a certified idiot and he is not a qualified to be a storyteller. Even a storyteller, he have to, you know, to remember what he said yesterday. So going back to the Muslims insisting that Jesus was sent only to the Jews. That even is not consistent with the Quran. You see, if the Quran says that Jesus says, Ya Bani Israel, <laughs> actually, there's a video made by the guy, his name is Norman Khan, and I found it very funny. I made a video about it. He said, How amazing the Quran is. Why? He said, as an example, uh, Jesus, he don't call Israel my people. He don't call Israel my people. He called them all children of Israel. Why? Because he don't have a father from Israel. Anyone remember this video? Okay. Look what Nu'man Khan, he confirmed. So Jesus is not from Israel. You can go and search the video where he speak about amazing statement in the Quran. 
language, language uh, miracle, what they call it. Any Muslim can do, go and search for this video and you will die laughing. But look what they did. By agreeing that Jesus is not from Israel, according to the Quran statement, because Musa, he called the Jews, my people. So he was saying, why Jesus never said to the Jews, my people? Because he's not from them. The Quran says you have to call them by the names of their father. Hmm? By the name of their father. So Jesus, he had no father from the Jews. But look what happened now. If we go in the Quran, we will find. It says the following. <clears throat> In chapter 14, verse number 4, we send not a messenger except to teach in the language of his own people. Do you see it? And Nu'man Khan, those who would do anything to my video later, you can search for the video and insert his video there so people die laughing. So they will see we are not making things up. So when Nu'man Khan confirmed, and you Muslims, you love him, this Nu'man Khan, you know, Especially he sent his pictures without t-shirt to the, to the girls around. We sent not a messenger except to teach the language of his own people. So he have to be from the people. And your funny teachers, they confirm that Jesus is not calling the Jews my people because he is not from them. So Jesus was sent to who? Is if he because if he was sent to the Jews, that is a contradiction for this verse. Are we taking notes, guys? Are we taking notes? Islam is very easy to defeat. I can defeat Islam by just letting my, my toes debate any scholar, especially if you have decency. You see. The hardest part of debating a Muslim is debating someone he don't debate, he lie. Which means you show it to him in the screen, he say, I, I don't see it, where? You show him the interpretation, he says, I don't say that, where, where? Those people, you cannot debate them. A debate has to be done by two people who have decency. You say to me about Christianity, something truly we believe in, well, I have no choice but to say yes, we believe in that. I say to you something about Islam and I show you the reference and I prove it that this is true. A decent Muslim, he will say, you are right. That's what we believe in. That can be considered a debate. But I did not see until now. One of them, he have a decency to say, yes, we believe in this. Now look at this verse in the front of us this verse destroyed muhammad and his cult and destroy all the claims of muslims about who was sent to who and you will notice that those potatoes who make videos speaking about jesus they will never answer i mean we show them the reference like this guy here his name in and he called himself a, a what a, a christian a christology specialist specialist you are He called himself Christology Specialist. Hmm. All of them, they are a specialist in everything except Islam. Jesus is not for all people. And not only that, Christian Prince has defeated. I mean, are you kidding me? I've been defeated a long time ago. If we go with the logic of this Muhammadan, and this is, by the way, he is just copy-paste. He's a victim. He's a stupid. He's a victim. Those people, they copy. They, they, not, none of them, he knew what he's talking about. I will go with you. We never send a messenger except to teach the language of his people. So in this verse, there is two conditions. Who is the one who put the conditions? Allah. Are you going to say Allah is a liar now? 
people in the chat Muslim Christians Jewish Hindu whatever you are atheist what is the two condition you understand from this verse help me please if there is really true a two condition Allah is asking for he's saying I will never send except so there is no exception there's two conditions have have to happen anyone can tell me what is the conditions the verse is saying help me please anyone <clears throat> I think there's a delay in the sound from your side but what is the conditions who can tell me not even one I think text is taking time maybe language and own people thank you ni ni we okay finally we have somebody is listening and he come to us with the answer let us put the answer on the screen uh mr uh oh, we lost his his text hold on let us drag it up where is text anyway he said uh language and his own people so there's two conditions I will put the first one here language the language as you see and his own people who is the one who put the condition Allah now those Muslim they will go and make a thousand video about Jesus was not sent to the Jews was not sent to the world he sent only to the Jews And they try to misquote verses in the Bible, but we cannot misquote this one here. Look carefully. Never. Never. We can change the translation. If you don't like this translation, I do. We can change it for you. What, what do you want? What translation is your favorite? We just change it for you. This is Hilali, Muhammad, Hilali, and Khan. We send not a messenger except with the language of his own people. So if Muhammad was sent to the Indonesian, and Indonesian not only one nation, I mean there's many ethnic group, and I believe there's many languages in Indonesia. Muhammad cannot be a messenger for Indonesian. India have more than 300 languages. Muhammad cannot be a messenger to any of them. How you can beat that? Are you going to say the Quran is lying? And remember, this is a verse was given to Muhammad, not to someone before Muhammad, and we send not. This is a verse given to Muhammad saying, Muhammad, tell them, we send not a messenger except with the language of his own people. In order, even Allah, He make it more clear. Thank you, Allah. To make it the message clear for them, makes sense. There is something makes sense in the Quran. That's funny. That's strange, actually. Finally, there is something makes sense in the Quran. It's a miracle. So why Allah will not send a prophet or a messenger unless? He is speaking the tongue of the people. And he is from the people. Simply, you have to be native, speaking clear language. So you can be a messenger for the people in order to make it clear. Can a Muslim say Allah is lying? Trust me, they will say so. Already, I heard many Muslims, when they call me, they say, oh, the Quran is, many played with it. The last time we have somebody, if you remember, he said to me, oh, Quran, obviously, it's a man-made. This is not the Quran.
translate to Indonesian. My friend, you can download my video and you can add subtitle as you wish to the video. And actually, there is somebody. If if anyone he is a he speak Korean, we need somebody to translate to Korean. The Muslims are working hard. They are using a kid who have a girlfriend. She is a Muslim, and she converted him to Islam. And they are using this kid to fool the Korean. So if you are a Korean and you speak the language, please add subtitle. Download my videos and get them busted. All languages we need all people to work with us. The deception war is very powerful. So in the Quran, Muhammad cannot be a messenger for mankind. Not only that, the Quran make it clear that Muhammad was sent only to Mecca, the village of Mecca, and the villages around it. Chapter 6, verse number 92, chapter 42, verse number 7. Let us see what they say. And this is a book which we send down, bringing blessing and confirming revelation. Confirming revelation from who? Of the Christians. And the liar, they say the, the Bible is corrupted. And by the way, again in Arabic, it doesn't say confirming revelation. It says not be, be what came before it. It says what is between his hands. I mean, not a single one of them dare to translate correctly. You can go right now, copy in Google, as you see in the screen. Those are three words or four words. Copy them and put them in Google translation and you will see it says confirming what is between his hands. That is it says. <clears throat> I just found that Allah he sent me a mosquito. Where did she go? Ah, she is gone. A mosquito in my house. It must be sent by the Jews. Alhamdulillah, brother. Alhamdulillah. Do you think the brother of the Jews they send the mosquito to me, brother? Actually, we can do it right now in front of you. I mean, what a big deal. Here we go. Let me open Google Translation. <clears throat> Google Translate. All right. We will do it in the front of your eyes. Give me a second. <clears throat> this is the verse in Arabic, as you see. A copy, Google, Google translation, paste. Musaddikan, who is in his hand? The funny, the English translation is not coming correct. Musaddikan, it should be confirming or believing in what is between his hands. Do you see it? So why the word between his hands in the Muslim translation disappear? Because that will destroy all the fabrication they say that our Bible is corrupted. Because the Quran confirmed that this is a book between his hand and he confirmed it. As simple as that. However, the verse not only that saying that he confirmed that, that the Torah and the Gospel, he is conf it's confirming that Allah sent him to warn the people of Mecca and what is around it. Do you see it? Do you see it? So the book, the Quran, was sent for the people of Mecca to warn people of Mecca and little tiny population around it. Who says that? The Quran. Different verse. 
Chapter 42, verse number 7. <clears throat> We have sent an inspiration to the, look here, he even add the word Arabic, an Arabic Quran. Okay, why it's an Arabic Quran? We showed you that Allah never sent a message or a messenger unless uh, to people who speak the tongue. Right? We send not a messenger except with the language of his people. So you have to be from the people, he speaks the language of his people. So what the Quran says? We send you the Quran in Arabic. Let's close some browsers, too many browsers. So when chapter three, verse number three says that Allah, he called the, the people of uh, the, the book of the, the Christian in Jeel, that's mean the Christians are Greek. Correct? By if Allah, who is the one who chose the name in Jeel? Is it me? In this book? No. Allah, he called it in Jeel, but in Jeel is a Greek word. That's mean Allah, based in the Quran, saying, we never send the messenger except to speak the language of his people. Okay, that's mean Jesus was sent to the Greek, not to the Jews, and not to the Hebrew. Do you see the stupidity? Otherwise, Muslims need to explain to us how Jesus was sent to the Hebrew, but yet they call their book in a Greek language. So imagine I write a book about Islam and my book in German, but the title is in Chinese. That's crazy. So Allah confirming that he sent the Quran in Arabic and Allah confirming we never send the messenger unless he speak the tongue of his people. So the Arabic tongue is the tongue of who? I mean, you have to be genius to find out, right? Let us, let us guess Japanese, Chinese, uh, Portuguese, Indonesian, uh, Pakistanis, uh, Philippines. I just add ease in the, in, the, in the end of it, that will make it perfect English. Arabic ease. So look what happened now. Those bunch of fools trying to prove to us that Jesus was not sent to the whole world, but what the Quran confirmed that Muhammad cannot be sent to the whole world. Cannot even be sent to the Arab, because the verse in the Quran says, we send you to warn what is in Mecca and what is around Mecca. That's it. And then this guy, he come to us and he call himself a Christian. Christian what? Uh, Christology expert. Christology. I mean, even Zach and I could not do that, man. Brother Sitter, we have a brother. He is very expert. And he is expert in the Christology. His name is Ustad Insan Lama Katugudikapadikapadikudi. I need from the media. Okay, here we go. We just had confirmation from Zach and Naik yeah, that you have expertise in Christology. You cannot even read your own Quran. Now, if we study carefully, oh, hold on. I just remind, remember a hadith Muhammad he said. Give me a second. I'm trying to remember the whole hadith. Mm. I did not quote this hadith for a long, long time. So I need to remember. You see, in order to find it fast and search, you need to remember at least like a long line of it. Let us see what the hadith is saying. Hmm. Uh, I guess this. Uh, the, we have some rust in the brain now. We need to do uh, camel urine will help, I think. Camel urine. Mm -hmm. Oh, I get it. Hold on. Let me find it. Hold on. Wait. 
<clears throat> okay. Here we go. Bingo. This is Sahih Al Bukhari. The garbage collector, Imam Al Bukhari. And the funny, by the way, Imam Al Bukhari never saw Muhammad, never met Muhammad, but yet he can tell you what Muhammad said a few hundred years ago. True story. Look what Muhammad said. <coughs> Who said that? Muhammad and this is Sahih al-Bukhari. Hadith number 3506. You see it? All right. It says that the Prophet, he told the Muslims to write the Quran in the language of Quraysh because this is how it was revealed. Read carefully. The Quran as was revealed in their language. Who? Quraysh. So write the Quran in the language of Quraysh. Let us go see more clear hadith than this one. Hold on. Give me a second. All oh, those hadith actually they are saying the same. <clears throat> if you disagree about something in the Quran, in cause you disagree with Zayd ibn Thabit al Ansari regarding any dialect, Arabic uh, uh, utterance of the Quran, then write it in the dialect of Quraysh. For the Quran was revealed in this dialect. Was revealed in what? In the dialect of Quraysh. Sahih al Bukhari, hadith number 4984. So if Allah will send Quran for little tribe, little tiny tribe in their dialect. Why Allah will not send Quran to 300 million Indonesian in their dialect? Are you listening Indonesian? Little tiny tribe, it's not even in the size of a building in your Jakarta town. All of them, they can live in one tower in Jakarta. So Allah, he sent Quran in a dialect of a small tiny village tribe and he will not send you Quran so they might understand why he will send them in their dialect because the Quran says because so they might understand did I say that the Quran says that we never send a message a messenger with message unless he speak the tongue of his own people Never, never, that's it. So if Allah, he sends you, as you see the Muslim confirming, and this is Sahih al-Bukhari, authentic, the Quran in the dialect of Quraysh, and Allah, he sent the Quran in seven dialect. Why? Because there is seven dialect, supposedly, according to Muslims. Okay. If Allah needed to send the Quran in seven dialect, and those all are Arab, I mean, how the Arab, they are seven, like seven dialects, they cannot understand the Quran and dialect of Quraysh. How someone from Egypt, like this Mimi and Fifi and Susu and Dudu and Didi, they can understand the Quran and dialect of Quraysh, and they are not an Arab, actually. Most of those, you see their names, like Ad Adnan al -Seed. Do you Do he speak Arabic? He don't. So how he understand the Quran when, when Muhammad himself, He told Allah that you cannot give me the Quran in one dialect in Arabic. You have to give it to me in seven. 
for my people are not capable of doing it what is the capability is about reading comprehending reciting otherwise what capable do you see it this is muhammad saying that not me is that sahih absolutely this is sahih read carefully sahih muslim hayat number eight two one a Jibreel, the pizza guy, he came to Muhammad and he said to him, Allah has commanded you to recite the people in the Quran in one dialect. So what is the first dialect which came? Quraysh. We just showed you the, the, the reference, correct? You remember? We just showed you that the dialect we are talking about, which Muhammad he received, is Quraysh. And that makes sense because simply, supposedly, he is from Quraysh. Even though nobody knows who his father. But he grew there. So, Allah commanded you to recite the Quran in the dialect of Quraysh as it's confirmed in the previous hadith. Yeah, this is what we are saying, magic man, because Muslims, you see, Islam is about enslaving, subduing you to their Arab agenda. This is why you see the first thing Islam do will take your identity as Indonesian, as a German, or anything, and he will make you an Arab. You have to say, pray, talk in the language of Allah. You have to eat as they eat. You have to slaughter as, as the Arab slaughter. You have to speak as they speak, and you have to even, everything you do, you have to be an Arab. Forget about your culture. Actually, Muhammad, he says that the one who is a proud about his family or his tribe or his inheritance, culture, before Islam, tell him to go and bite the penis of his father. Go, tell him to go and bite the penis of his father. Very filthy man. <clears throat> this is a religion made by the Arab for to, to take over. Right? Uh, we will see if we will take call, take calls. We wanna, we wanna, we don't want kids. We want people who have knowledge in Islam. If you are a scholar, if you are somebody, you think you are a big shot, we will be happy to talk to you. All right, just confirm that to us. Like, show us, a, make a post in Facebook that you are willing to talk to Christian Prince, and we will and, and post for us your Skype, and I will call you. So, Muhammad, he said to Allah. He never spoke to Allah directly. He's speaking now to Jibreel. I seek, I ask Allah for burden and forgiveness. My people are not capable of doing it. Doing what? My people are not capable of doing it. Indonesia Muslim, listen to me. If the Arab, who they are Arab, who grow up in the desert, and their Arabic is their first native language, are not capable of reciting the Quran in Quraysh dialect. So how you in Indonesia, you have a kid, he recite the Quran. That's when Muhammad is lying. You have a kid in Indonesia, you keep beating him until he recite the Quran perfectly. Hmm? You take him since the year of six years old and you force him to repeat like a report machine. And then as he's a kid, he will remember. This is the best age to make people memorize anything. He's saying it, he memorized it, and that's it. So how Muhammad saying that my people are not capable of doing it? But a child in Indonesia can recite the Quran. That means Muhammad is a liar. And his request for more dialect is a fraud. 
The reason Muhammad he was asking, or he made this fabrication that he asked Allah for seven dialect, because he cannot recite the same verse twice correctly. So in order to cover his lies and his fabrication as a prophet, he claimed that Allah gave him the Quran in seven ways. Which means even if he makes seven mistakes, you know, just take it. Anytime you say to him, oh, you did not say that to me last time. The verse, you and now you are saying it is, is not the same. He say, ah, I did not tell you. <laughs> Allah told me to uh, give me the Quran seven ways. Does it make sense that Allah will send the Quran in seven ways? Did Allah send the Torah to Moses in seven ways? Did Allah send the, the gospel to Jesus in seven ways? As long as you must believe that his Injil sent by Allah. Huh? And look what happened here, guys. Is it the Muslim they claim that the Quran is a language miracle and nobody can write Quran like it? Don't they say that? What is the miracle in a book where even the same tribe, they are incapable of doing it? Where is the miracle? Because the miracle is to make it simple, easy. Not to make it, nobody can read it. Otherwise, what's the point of sending this book? So when Muhammad, he said, my people are not capable, he was lying. If Muhammad, he mean that they can't understand it, that means the Quran is not clear. And actually, the Quran is not clear. All Muslims agree that the Quran is not clear. Even the Quran itself confirmed that the Quran is not clear. No Muslim can explain the Quran. The, 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 the Muslim agree about, to disagree about the meaning of the Quran. This is the only agreement they have. This is why they have millions of interpretation and each one of them he, he fly with his interpretation. Like you see, some interpretation is coming from the moon. <clears throat> I will give you an example. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. <clears throat> I will give you an example of some Islamic funny interpretation. And how clear the Quran for them is. Give me a second. How the Muslims explain the word based on their Quran. Read carefully. This is a chapter, it's called Qa. Okay, what Qa mean? Qa in Arabic is letter? No, it's not. Qa is a mountain, my friend, Qaf. From the narration of his authority, Ibn Abbas, the cousin of Muhammad, he said, in his interpretation of Allah saying Qaf, Qaf, he says, it's an azure mountain overlooking this world and the color of the sky come from it. Allah swear by it. <laughs> Look at this. So there is a mountain, it's called Qaf. And this mountain is surrounding the earth like a wall. And there is in the sky, and this is an azure mountain. It's a blue mountain. And the reason the sky is a blue, because the sky takes its color from it. And why we cannot see it? Hello, because it's a blue, have the same color of the sky. I mean, why you are not understanding? The Quran now is clear. You see how clear the Quran now? Allah swearing by Qaf. What is Qaf? So every one of them, he started bringing you his own understanding based in Muhammad teaching, supposedly. Let us see another uh, uh, 
another joke just an example we are not picking up our cherries but the whole Quran is stupid anyway but just for fun just to show you how, how Islam function and here they try to fool people saying that the Quran is an amazing book a Quran brother the Quran uh-huh yeah all right <clears throat> Chapter of Al Qalam, chapter 68, verse number one. You see, this is verse number one. We're not even reading like verse number 20. Or let me let me try to uh, make the page more clear for you so you can read it better. I don't know if you can read the text with me. Let us see if I make the text bigger, what will happen? Okay, that's better. From his narration in the authority of Ibn Abbas, he said regarding the interpretation of Allah saying noon. He says noon, Allah swear by noon, which is the wheel carries the earth on its back while in the water. Stop. Can somebody call the Christo, uh, 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 Christ, what? Christ, Christology expert? Dr. Uh, Potato Tomato, who don't maybe have a school? So you are expert in Christology. Can you, your majesty, Mr. Expert, explain to us how the earth is swimming in the top of the whale? As long as you are the expert. Or what about the other ustas? how this is happening so now what we learn in two seconds from the knowledge of allah a true story that we have a whale and here there's a fountain coming from here water and this is the earth brother in the top of the whale and this is uh, where I live. And the whale is in the water. Where is the whale? It's in the water. We have to be careful with details here. Makes sense. Quran gave us all the answers for things we need. What do you want more? I remember the Quran said that we never send the messenger unless he speak the language of his people so they might make the message to them clear. So now the Quran is so clear to the point we come with the knowledge that the earth is swimming in the top of a whale. Obviously the Quran is so clear. And not only that, you are not done. So the whale who carry the earth on the, its back while in the water and beneath, look, Allah is good in diving too. He was a snorkeling, which is a bowl. What? Under the whale, there is a bowl. Okay. What we can do? We have now to get a better image of this. <clears throat> so here we have a bowl under the whale. Let me introduce to you Mr. Bull. And remember, this is the clear Quran. We are not talking about the Quran, which is not clear. This is the clear Quran, brother. And under the bowl, there is a rock. Things getting complicated. Okay, there is a rock. What we can do? We have to draw a, a rock now. Oh, let us make a rock. Hmm. We will make it. Uh, we will make it uh, a green rock. There's a rock. 
Makes sense. You have to stand on the rock. I mean, where, where he will stand? You tell me. What do you think? The boy will stand on nothing? Like, hello? So we have the earth in the top, in the top of the whale, the whale in the top of the ball, the ball in the top of the rock. It's simple. What is what is your problem? Kuffar, infidel, dirty, filthy. And under the rock, uh -huh. look, we are getting in more details now. Under the rock, there's a dust. Dust. Okay, how I'm going to draw dust now? Hold on, I need to make dust now. Dusty, dusty. <clears throat> uh, let us make the dust in red now. So we will be able to see the dust. There is dust. Under the rock, there is dust. Makes sense. I mean, it's a rock. What do you find under the rock? Dust. Hello? Uh, makes sense. Okay. So now, our knowledge is increased in Christology. Because the Muslims who are expert with the Christology, they told us, that they explained the Quran for us. They are not only expert in our Bible, they are expert in the Quran. Look at this. And now let me introduce to you the knowledge which nobody knows. And none knows. None, none. Look, look. Focus with me here. Wake up, wake up. All of you, wake up. And none. See, none here. This is a strong none knows what is under the dust save Allah like stop behind this point nobody knows anything save Allah for Allah is the expert on dust and nobody can go behind this line that's it here you stop Our knowledge as Muhammadan is limited, brother. We have to be honest here. If we ask Zakir Naik about this, he will say, <clears throat> Brother Sitter, the Quran is very simple and very clear. And the Quran confirmed to us that there is certain knowledge nobody knows of Allah. As an example, what is under the rock, what is in the top of the bowl, Within the top of the bowl is the whale. Within the top of the bowl, the whale is the earth. The answer, a dust. But within the, the dust, nobody knows of Allah. And this is very clear. Uh, <clears throat> Dr. Zakir Naik, <clears throat> why Allah did not share with us the knowledge what is under the dust? Is there something scary there? Do you think like there's Madonna or what? Who, who's under the dust there? What do you think? Good friend, you are very dirty. And you always speak about textual things. First of all, I cannot tell you what is under the dust. Secondly, you are suggesting that there is Madonna is a very, very, very stupid of you. Because what Madonna will do under the dust? Uh, I heard that some women, they do like uh, put sand on their body to get their skin better. Actually, this is a great idea. And maybe we can make scientific miracle about the Quran about it. Thank you for reminding me. What is this? So Allah, he sent the book in Arabic, so he might make it clear to the Arab and the Arab who speak Arabic, they come with this to explain the Quran? I mean, do you see how clear it is? And not only that, I mean, look at the story, it's getting more complicated, brother. The name of the whale, they know the name of the whale, those guys. I mean, they knew his name. The name of the whale is Loish. This is not Lowish Farrakhan, this is a different one. The name of the whale is Lowish. Lowish, you called him this name, Lowish. In Arabic, you know, it's like, what, what for? And uh, uh, it said, the name, it's Lutaya. They are not sure from the name, man. The name of the bull is Bahamut. And some they say its name is a Talahut or Leona. Look what? The whale is in the sea called Adwad. Hold on, hold on. This is really getting so complicated.
I mean, do you see how the Quran make the Quran is so clear? And, and by the way, there is verses in the Quran say clearly that Allah وَفَصَّلْنَاهُ tafsir. We made the Quran very clear, very clear. Okay, now let us let us learn from what we learn from this. Going back to the drawing. Let us zoom in a little bit. So the name of the whale is Lewish. Here, this is the whale. Let us make the arrow in different color. Uh, let us say, uh, black. The wheel is called Lewish. Okay. The name of the ball, Bahamut. This is the ball. Now we have really a very good scientific knowledge. We learn from Allah. And now the interpretation continue. Are we done? No, we just started. Things getting more clear now. Look what it says. Oh, we forgot the name of the ball. Uh, no, sorry, the, the name of the ball is Adwad. Adwad. Uh, we made a mistake. Uh, the whale in the sea is a sea called ah uh, the the name of the sorry the the, the name of the uh, uh, the sea it's called Adwad. If you ever hear uh, like find something about Adwad Sea, well, let me know. So this is the name of the sea, brother. Adwad. So now we have the name of the whale carrying the earth. We have the name of the ball carrying the earth. And we have the name of the sea. What do you want more? We got all the details. Now they continue with their clear Quran. And they say, It's like a small ball. It's like a small ball. This is the sea now. Oh, we are... Hold on. So the sea is like a small ball in a huge sea, and the sea hollowed rock whereby there is four thousand cracks, even they knew the number of the cracks under the rock. And from each crack, water spring out to the earth. Now we knew where the fresh water is coming. This is explain why Muhammad said in the Quran that the fresh water and the salty water never mixed. And now look how we clear the Quran to the point. A second they were telling us that the earth is carried by a whale and the whale his name is Lewish and the, the bull his name is Bahamut. And the, and the sea is called Awad or Adwad. And now look what happened in a second. They switch. And they say, and it's also said that Noon is the name of the name of Allah. Look. If, 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 if. So a second ago, Noon was a whale. A second after, this is a name of Allah. Why Allah is a whale? It stands for the four letters, for the letter noon in Allah name Ar-Rahman. Look, look, they are trying to find where this word came from. 
<laughs> a letter in the word of Rahman. That's it. That's it. We found it. And also said, look how we clear the Quran. And also said that noon is an inkwell. What the heck? So noon was a whale. Then noon became Allah. And then, uh, then, then noon became an inkwell. By the pen, Allah swear by the pen. Makes sense. Makes sense. This pen is with this pen. The wise remembrance is written, you know, and, and the graded tab tablet, brother. So do you see how we clear the Quran? And now we understand why Allah He said, we never send the messenger but yet he have to speak that in the tongue of his own people so they might understand. The purpose is so clear. <clears throat> now, there's no confusion no more. Quran is so clear and no matter who you are, Indonesian, if the Arab and this is the cousin of Muhammad coming with this, Ibn Abbas is the cousin of Muhammad. And now we understand why the Quran in chapter 14, verse number 4 says, when we send not a messenger except with the language of his people, so he can make it clear for them. <clears throat> How clear we can make it more than this? Let us be honest. Hmm? Anyone? <clears throat> Anyone have an answer? Isn't it this is the clear Quran you have? Isn't it this is your Allah logic? Allah He sent the Quran in a message, in a language, so people can understand? How Jesus died in the cross? How He was saved in the cross? Can the Quran explain to us? No. So each one of them, He come with His own story. Each Muslim interpretation, he give you his own story. And not only that, in the same interpretation, you will see many scenarios in the same page for how Allah saved Jesus. You see how clear the Quran? So now, based in the Quran, Allah will never send a messenger unless he speak the tongue of his own people in order his people to understand. So why Abraham, he went to Mecca? And why Ishmael, he went to Mecca? Now we have other problem. According to Muslims, Ishmael, he learned Arabic from the Arab. Ishmael, his language is not Arabic. He learned Arabic from the Arab, so Ishmael cannot be a messenger for the Arab. And if they say to you there was nobody there, no, there was the tribe of Jerham. And according to Muslims, he married from them. According to Muslims, he married from them. And by the way, how he married from them and then your prophet became his descendant. Isn't it this tribe is the enemy of your Muhammad? And the tribe of Quraysh, they kicked them out from Mecca? <clears throat> right? We never send the messenger except in the language of his tongue. So why Allah sent Harun to Pharaoh? 
it says, we never send a messenger to his own people. Is Harun and Moses are from the Egyptian? Why Allah send them there? So when the Muslim they try their best to say to you that Jesus was not sent for all mankind as we showed you in many videos Muslims they have this is just to eliminate Christ from your life so if you are Indonesian don't think that Christ can save you because Jesus was not sent to you this is what they are saying Jesus is not for all people As if God is not for all people. You see, as long as the Christian they believe that Jesus is God, can God be only for a certain group? Let me explain how God can be for a certain group, if we want to take it this way. I know my people and my people know me. I know my sheep and my sheep they know me. What does that mean? Those who believe in me, my people. doesn't matter who they are. That will be a certain group. But that can be African, European, Asian, it can be anyone. Jesus the Messiah, he said it clearly, whoever drink my water will never go thirsty. Whoever believe in me and die will never, you know, whoever believe in me, he will never die. He will live forever. Whoever, whoever. So in order to fight Christ, you see, this is, a, this is a religion, it is the enemy of a Christ. Islam is an antichrist God. The purpose and the target is, let us crucify Christ and kill him and take him away from the world. We don't want Christ to be in the world. We want only one name. His name is Muhammad. He is our God. Do you really need more proof that Islam is an antichrist cult? What is going to hurt Muslims if they believe that Jesus, okay, don't they say that Jesus was a prophet? Okay. And Jesus was sent to guide people? Okay. And Jesus, the prophet, want to teach you to be believing in Allah? Okay. So what the problem? Why they don't want you, even that message as Jesus as a prophet, even that one, they don't want it to be in your life. Because they want to kill Jesus. They want to replace Jesus by the faith in Muhammad. Do you understand? If Jesus is just a prophet, as they claim, so what is the problem if Jesus is the prophet, somebody who is living in China believe in him as a prophet? No, the Muslim will not accept that. No, no, no. You have to believe in Muhammad. That's why you have to say Shahada. They are mushrikeen. They are kuffar. The Muslims are pagan kuffar mushrikeen. They kiss a stone. They pray in the front of a stone. They bow to a stone and they pray in the direction of a stone. And not only that, their prophet, he told them that if you touch a stone, your sin will be forgiven. Am I making things up? Let us see. They associate the name of Muhammad with the name of their God, and that is a shirk. To level a name of a man with the level of God. For us, Jesus is God. So we are not elevating a man to be with God. He is God. For you, Muslim, when you say Shahada, you put the name of your prophet with the name of your God. Why? For you are Mushrikeen, you are Kuffar. And look what your prophet he said. Let us find the hadith. <clears throat> Read carefully. Sunan Nisa'i, hadith number 2919. And as you see, it is Hassan, which means good, fine. Abu Abdul Rahman, why do I only see you touching these two corners? He said, I heard the Messenger of Allah say, touching them erase sins. What? Touching them erase sin. And not only that, if you circulate around those stones, is like freeing a slave so you don't need to free a slave no more just go around the Kaaba seven times you free a slave
don't free slaves go around the Kaaba circulate seven times like an ant going around some you know you can see videos ants they go they, they make a circle sometimes they go they, they have like their own program but as you see touching those two corners those are corners those are stone the black stone and the Yemeni corner and the reason the Yemeni corner is called that way because they have stones brought from the temple of Mecca, which is the same as the name of Mecca coming from. People used to go to the temple, the big temple of al Mecca. You can search it in Google, which is the moon temple, the biggest temple in, in that territory. So people who want people to come to them, customers, let us say customers like Las Vegas. So people, they go to visit this temple. What we do, we go and bring some stones from that temple and we put them in the corner of our Kaaba. And now we teach you to believe that if you touch those corners, erase your sins. So why you want to travel all the way to Yemen? We have the stones for you here. Otherwise, I challenge any Muslim to explain to us how touching stones erase sin. All right, we will zoom out. Is it better now? <clears throat> How touching stones erase sin if you are a pagan? So look what they do. They try to re replace everything about Jesus with Muhammad for they worship the man Muhammad. And just because Muhammad, he said, touching them erase sin, you do it? Yes. If you remember, once I went to an Islamic chat <clears throat> and in the Islamic chat I asked them why the Prophet he kissed the black stone anyone remember we have we made a video about it you know we made a video about it let us see <clears throat> <sighs> what a stupid cult. Omar ibn al-Khattab, he said, I know that you are just a stone. You are what? Just a stone. Use this stone. Can not de neither be useful, neither uh, uh, har uh, you know, harmless. Do you see it? Just because the prophet, I see in the prophet kissing you, I'm kissing you. But what Omar al Khattab he confirmed that Muhammad is a fraud. For how in there he says the one who touched them it's erase your sin, and Omar he says, you, I know you are useless. Neither do any harm nor give any benefit. So either Omar al Khattab is a liar, or Muhammad is a liar, and I challenge any Muslim to say that Omar al Khattab is a liar. Especially Muhammad, he was taking Quran from him. <clears throat> and not only that, Muhammad, he taught the Muslims that if you want to cry, cry in front of the black stone. Cry where? In front of the black stone. Let me see if I can find the hadith. Just give me a second. Ah, we cannot find it here. Let me see if I can find it in Arabic and then we can use Google translation if we have to
<coughs> All right, let us use this one. We found an Arabic page. Uh, let us see. Huh. All right, let us use this one. Black stone followers from the Stone Age. Yesterday we heard the news about a Muslim. He attacked two, he, he drove his car in the street and he started driving over in France. And now there is two policemen and many others are in the hospital and they might die. Praise be to Allah. Look what it says here. Reported by Jabir, and by the way, this is not a hadith of the Shia, this is Sunni. Here, this is reported here in this book, al mabsut al sarkhasi volume number four, page number nine. Let us see what it says. And I will, I, will, I will do Google translation for you after I read in Arabic. Rawa Jabir, Allah pleased with him, that the, the messenger, that the prophet, he started with the black stone and he hold it. And from Umar, radiallahu anhu, and the Umar reported that he said, that he hold the black stone. And then, uh, uh, and, and I saw the father of Qasim, uh, uh, he have no shoes. And from Omar, they are reporting like many, and now look what he says. Inna al-Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qabbal al-hajar wa wada'a shafatayhi alayhi wa baka tawilan thumma nadara fa'idha huwa bi'umar radiyallahu anhu faqal ya Omar huna tuskabu al-abarat. The Prophet, he hold the black stone and he put his lips on it and he cry for long. Translation from, let us see, to English. It says here, The Prophet came before the black stone. This is the translation of Google, by the way, which is not tot totally accurate. But it says here, he put his lips on, on, on the stone and he cried for a long time. And then he looked to Omar and he said, this is where is the place to cry. In the front of the stone. I challenge any Muslim to tell me why we need to cry in the front of the black stone. I remember Muhammad, he said, let me send you the link for those who might like to have a link. I need to make it short because it have uh, Arabic in the title, so it's going to be impossible to post it in Google. All right. This is the link if you like to have reference. Muhammad, and then look what it says after that. It says that Omar, he said, well, I know that you are useless and harmless in the same page. When the black stone, when, when Omar, he came to the black stone, he said, I know that you are useless and harmless. So why Muhammad is kissing the stone and crying and putting his lips on it? And then it says here that the Prophet said 
that when you hold the black stone, when you hold the black stone, Allah, you know, Allah who made uh, a human being from the seed of Adam, he made a covenant with them. And when you hold this black stone between your hands, he renewed the covenant with Allah. And then the black stone is going to witness for him in the day of judgment. Do you see it? If this is not paganism, what is paganism? Allah, he need. You see, I, if Muhammad was saying that this stone metaphorically is going to witness for you, no problem. Metaphorical, it's accepted. Makes sense. But no. In different hadith, Muhammad, he made it clear that the black stone is going to have lips, is going to have a mouth, is going to have a tongue. So it is not a metaphorical. And no Muslim, no Muslim scholar accept this to be metaphorical. Not a single one. I remember I saw a, a clip, video clip in Egyptian Islamic TV. A question was sent to the Sheikh. He says, why we need to pray like in the front of the Kaaba, etc. He says, Islam is based on a stone. And everybody is my witness. The video is there. Islam is based on a stone. We pray in the front of a stone. We go around a stone. We bow in the front of a stone. And we pray in the direction of a stone. And when we want to fight the devil, we cast a stone. This is how Islam is. You like it or not? It's a stone cult. Any Muslim have an answer? Stone cult in every every meaning, which means violence, savage, barbaric. I don't know like those names what they present supposedly from history, but present I believe people going back in the time of savagery. This is Islam. It's a stone cult from the stone time and they're the thinking of Islam is a stone thinking. And this is why they don't want you to follow Jesus. For Jesus is risk for them. Jesus destroy Islam. Jesus expose Muhammad, the filthy prophet. What Jesus said, from their fruits you shall know them. Let us examine the fruit of Muhammad. And because, by the way, which is a good thing, the Muslims are ashamed of their prophet, so they try to fabricate facts about Muhammad. As an example, there's an article saying that Muhammad did marry Aisha when she was 21. What? Who said that Aisha? So because they are ashamed of their prophet, which is a very good sign, they try denying everything written about him. Aisha reported that Allah apostle married her when she was six years old. And he did the boom boom when she was nine. And he died when she was 18. A man at the age of 54, he is dreaming to have a girl. She is to be his wife. Not only that, actually, 
there's a story about a, a woman her name is Umu Hubayba, and Muhammad wanted to have her as a wife but when Muhammad he asked for her hand to be his wife like you see nothing wrong with having a wife correct nothing wrong would uh, having a wife that's not the problem but the problem is she was just past the age of nursing breastfeeding have you ever heard of a man an old man he wished to have a woman but not when she is a woman when she was in the age of a breastfeeding and he said in Balagat when she got older Umm Habib she will be my wife but when he said that when she was passing the time of breast feeding nursing let us show some reference because muslims they might say it doesn't say that cp this is the link you can use google translation and you can translate in your own and the book is musnad ahmed Musnad al Imam Ahmad, Hadith number 26329. It says, Hadathani, etc., etc., been told, narrated, but etc., etc., that the Prophet said, He saw Ummu Habiba, been to Abbas, the daughter of Abbas, and she was just over the age of breastfeeding. And he said, when she grow, the daughter of Abbas, and I am alive, she will be my wife. And later she, he took her. So when he des desired her, she was in her diaper. She was on her diaper. Why Muhammad did not marry older sister? You see, Muhammad, he will marry older women if he have a benefit from that. But he obviously, he like young children. And we can prove that. You see, Muhammad, he married Khadija, uh, even though Khadija, she is widow and she have two previous husbands before Muhammad and she have kids from them. And her kids is in the age of Muhammad. So how Muhammad married Khadija, that will be exposed in this hadith. Read carefully. When Muhammad he saw one of his companion, his name is Jabir, and Jabir was in a rush to go home. So Muhammad he said to him, Why you are a rush, Jabir? He said, Oh Prophet, I married, I married and I miss my wife. He said to him, Jabir, have you married? He said, Yes. He said, A virgin or previously married? The man he said, Well, a previously married. Muhammad said to him immediately, expressing the wise prophet knowledge about better life. Have you married? He said, yes. Again, he said, a virgin or a previously married? I said, O Messenger of Allah, would one who previously married? Whereupon, he said, he who, Muhammad, look at the devil. Why? Why? This is what the insan he says, right? Remember, why? Why, Christian prince? Exactly the same why. Imagine Muhammad and Mr. Insan, they are in the same age. And now they are giving you advice. Why don't you marry a young girl? Now, when you see a young girl, what does that mean? 
Later we will see. It's a child. So that you could sport with her and she could sport with you. Look at the devil. The guy is not complaining. He's happily married. What's your business? Imagine you have a daughter. She is married to a man. And then a guy, his friend, come to him. He says to him, why you marry this woman? Who is previously married? Why you don't marry a young girl, you idiot? So you can play with her. So the purpose of the marriage now is to play and sport with her. So she could amuse you. Or you could amuse with her. That is the advice of the wise prophet that's why jesus said that from their fruit you shall know them and then the man he got muhammad busted he said to him well prophet <laughs> my brother he died fighting for you you idiot and he left for me nine or seven daughters behind him i therefore did not approve the idea that i should bring a girl like them do you see it says girl like them people do you see it says a girl like them what does that mean? Girl like them, they are, they are orphans. His brother, he died. And now he have seven or nine orphans, little children. So I should, I did not approve the idea that I should bring a girl like them, a child like them. So I brought, I prefer to bring a woman who should take care, you know, look after them. This is who is Muhammad. Advising us to go and have a lust after little babies. And we just showed you how many of you opened the link I, I posted. How many of you saved the reference? Where he did wish to have a child as his future wife. You know, Muslim, he will say to you, well, first of all, in this about the story of Ummu Habiba, uh, uh, he did not marry her when she was a child. My friend, how in the world a man he is, a prophet, adult, he asks for the hand of the girl when she is just in the age of a breastfeeding. She's a, it says, الفطيم, which means just past the nursing. So what is that would be? According to Quran, maximum is two years. Nursing is two years. Quran says that. So she is two years. She just passed two years, and you're a prophet. Asking for her hand, saying if she grow and I still alive, she will be mine. What is in the head of this man? So he married Khadija because she is rich. And now we understand, as, as you see, this guy, he don't like previously married women. He favor, this is why Muhammad, he said that his favorite dish is Aisha, because she is the youngest. But the important part of our topic today why the Muslims, they want you to believe that Jesus was only sent to the Jews? Who remind me what is the answer for that? I want to see how many of you is listening carefully. What is the purpose? They say to you, Jesus was sent only to the Jews. What is behind that? They want you to forget about Jesus and what Jesus did to you in the cross. They want to demolish the name of a Christ. Even Muhammad, he says, one of his names is Al-Mahi. What does that mean? He's the eraser. They said to him, you want to erase what? He says, Christianity. Who is the liar? But he who denied that Jesus is the Christ, he is Antichrist who denied the Father and the Son. So the Christ who is the Savior of the world is denied by Muhammad. He wants him to be Christ only for the earth. For, for, for the Jews, sorry. So you forget about him. Only 13 million Jews can get the benefit of the Messiah. And not only that, actually, 
even those Jews now they cannot get the benefit of that because Muhammad claimed that's it he erased Christianity he erased Jesus even the Jews now are it's not they shouldn't if they if they say we want to follow uh, 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 Jesus is not accepted you have to follow Muhammad The plan is so clear. And Muhammad is obsessed with money and sex. And this is why he made many privilege in his book about money and sex. Why the Bible is so clear. You cannot save two masters. And it's so clear who is the master of Muhammad. Otherwise, why Muhammad make a privilege in his book? He will get the fifth from every attack. Don't Allah provide to you? No, he need to be sure the fifth and the best of the booty to him. In Islamic books, they claim that the Prophet, he have 16 privilege. About nine of them is about his penis and money. Literally. How we knew who is following the devil? You are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and he abode not the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks, he speaks a lie. He speaks of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it, the father of all lies. And there's, we cannot find singular truth in Muhammad teaching. Even when he speak about Mary, that she was a virgin, even that is a lie. Not because she is a virgin, but the story how it was told. That there is God who sent his spirit and the spirit to blow into her vagina. What a filthy idiot. Always deceivers, they use some of the truth in order to poison you. A thief, you want to get inside your house. There's two kinds of thief. There's the one who break the window. <clears throat> And there's one who bring a uniform to fool you. He say, I am the cable guy. I am from the electricity company. You open the door for him. And then he get in and then he will steal your Jews. And this is why Jesus says, be aware of false teachers. Those who come to you in a close of a sheep. They will come to you in a close of a sheep. And we as a Christians, we have a duty to expose Muhammad. If you think this is a duty of Christian prince, you are mistaken. This is your duty too. The Bible order us not to side with the wicked man, which means you cannot be politically correct and you say to a Muslim, oh, okay, just because you don't want to argue and you don't want to show him that he's, he's wrong. By doing that, you are siding with the wicked man, wicked Muhammad. You shall not spread false report. You shall not join hand with the wicked man. So you will be a false witness. Many in this world today, they are false witnesses. They claim to be priests. They say to you that Muhammad, he worshiped the same God. They say to you that Muhammad is Abrahamic. They say to you that Muhammad is from Ishmael, which is absolutely big, stupid, either a lie or a mistake. Depend who is saying it. Because some people, they say it because they are ignorant and that will make it a mistake of ignorance. And there's people who say it and they knew it's a lie, which will make it a lie. Everything we showed you proving that Muhammad is nothing but a wicked man.
never side with the wicked man Muhammad. And how in the world I am going to leave Jesus the Christ, the Holy. Guys, we are debating with Muslims about Jesus being God. Do you notice? Muslim, they cannot say Jesus was a bad person, he is a sinner, because even the hadith confirm that Jesus is the only one I can show you right now if there is a Muslim who want to challenge me. How the hadith explain that every prophet is a sinner, including Muhammad. Even the Quran confirmed that, except Jesus. But why Muhammad he did? Ye, you know, ye, ye say that, that Jesus was not a sinner because he want to earn your trust. He's the wicked man. Be aware of false teachers. Even be aware of false teacher will become, or they will come to you from between you, not even from different nation or different even belief. They claim to be Christians, but they are not. There is no question that Muhammad is a wicked man. I don't know if you guys, you uh, you like me to come later. I'm not sure because I noticed that afternoon most of you are disappear. So I'm not doing really late. Uh, but maybe we take a break. Maybe tomorrow and we go in the quality of life from the garbage of Muhammad. We will see. So I hope we learn something very clear today that when the Muslim, they want you to believe that Jesus was not sent for all. The purpose is so simple. They want to kill Jesus the Christ in your heart. They want to make you believe, don't wait for Jesus. He cannot help you. Jesus is no one. That's it. He's gone. Jesus does not exist anymore for them. Even though there is many contradictions in their own text where Muhammad he said that Jesus will come back in the judgment day and he will rule the earth. So how we do not how we say Jesus is not for all people, but Jesus is going to be the ruler for mankind and he will be the just ruler for all of us. If he was sent only for the Jews, he should come back to the Jews. And why Jesus only the one who is coming back? Muhammad the liar, he used that fact about Jesus in order to deceive you more. So in one hand, he agreed that Jesus is coming back. He agreed that he is going to judge the whole mankind. But the only thing he wants from you is to leave Jesus for now, as long as you're alive, and believe in him, Muhammad. So you die and you go to hell. This is the plan of the devil. For after death, there is no repent. So Muhammad says to you, oh, I will leave Jesus for you. After you die in the judgment day, he will come back. But that will be too late. He don't want you to believe in Jesus now. And Jesus said it clearly, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. So you don't follow Jesus. You don't repent. You don't belong to Jesus. And now it's the time to belong to Jesus, not after you die. After you die, that's it. It's a judgment day. When Muhammad, he made it clear that one of his names is Al-Mahi. The one who erase. He erase what? He erase Christianity. Let me see if I can find the hadith about him. Uh, huh. Read carefully. And actually here in this hadith, he claimed that he is, you know, either Muhammad, he don't speak good Arabic, he's a stupid, or the one who made this fabrication is not Muhammad. He said, I have five names. I am Muhammad and Ahmad and Al-Mahi, through whom Allah eliminate infidelity. And Muhammad, he made it clear that the Christianity is against Allah. It is infidelity. He will erase it. And then he claimed that he is Al-Hashir. 
but al hashr cannot be the first to be resurrected. And actually here Muhammad, he proved again again that he's stupid because he is the first to be resurrected, but in different hadith he says when he resurrected, he saw Musa's before him up. How you are the first to be resurrected and Musa's is before you? Stupid. A stupid person who cannot repeat the lie twice correctly. So anyway, guys, I want to say thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you. I hope we did learn something good. And those who they are asking how they can support us, you can go to Patreon and you can make donation there if you care for support. I don't talk about it. People send me text. Usually I don't answer. But you do not need to know. We have Patreon in the screen. So obviously this is where we receive donation. And I'm not sure why people ask where we can donate. So if you want to help, you can go there. So I want to say thank you guys uh, for uh, for your time. I hope we had covered the issue. And remember always that the purpose of this is just to kill Jesus. Islam is an antichrist cult. Islam do anything they can in their hand to make you forget about Jesus. Jesus does not exist in your life no more. There is only one person. His name is Muhammad. That is the whole purpose. Jesus cannot be used no more. Forget about him. He's just in the book for history. This is what they want from you. He's just someone we talk about, but we don't follow. He's just someone as a name in our book, but even the name is not correct. He's nobody. This is what Muhammad trying to say to you. Jesus is nobody. For Muhammad is an antichrist. Be careful, my friend. The devil, he will do everything he can in order to fool you. Don't be foolish. If a fool like Muhammad can fool you, how fool are you? The Bible is the book of wisdom. The Messiah did not leave us alone. He is with us. Every two of you mention my name, I will be between them. And now, right now, he is listening. And he said to us, you shall know them by their fruits. Muhammad, he called himself Muhammad, which means the praised one. Look at this filthy. He, he claimed to be God. The praised one. I thought the praised one is God. And yet he claimed that he worship his God and worship his God alone. But yet he called himself Muhammad. This is one of the names of God. He changed his name from Qatham to Muhammad. However, the names will not make any, any different for us. What if he called himself Jesus? Still, he is a fraud. What if he called himself Moses? Still, he is a fraud. It's not your name. It's your fruit. And all of you are welcome to examine the filthy fruit of this filthy man. Criminal, thief, rapist, liar, a man who approved lying to the wife, beating the wife, cheating in the wife, and he himself, he practiced all those things. No ethic, no dignity. Not a trustworthy. When Muhammad he went to his own son, and this is written in his their book, that Muhammad he went to his own son house when the wife was there and he flirted with her. You see, there's a story about a prophet in the Bible when he went and he liked a woman, so he sent her 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 husband to war, so he can get rid of him and he died, so he can have the women. But this man repent to God and ask God for forgiveness and he cried for it, agreeing that he was a filthy man. Please, God, forgive me. Muhammad, he don't do that. Muhammad, he made verses in the Quran claiming that Allah says to him, why you hide your lust to this woman who you want to have sex with her? And I believe strongly he's already sleeping with this woman. And this is his own son. And the funny, the Muslim, they will say adopted son, adopted son or adopted dog will not make a difference, you idiot. 
The second, and not only that, the hadith confirmed that Muhammad, he says, all oh, people be my witness. From now on, Zayd is my son and Muhammad is the father of Zayd. And this is why he was going to the house when the husband is not there because suppose he's trustworthy. He is the father. And then when he go to the house, he flirt with the wife. And then he made a verse that his God told him, why you are hiding what is in your heart for her? My friend, the wisdom of the Messiah, your Lord, is in front of you. This is not a golden statement. This is beyond all the gold. This is beyond all the jewels. You shall know them by their fruits. By their fruit. Remember always this. If you want to get married from a woman or from a man, remember to examine the fruit. You shall know them from their fruits. If you want to have a business with somebody before you do business, you shall know them by their fruits. If you want to take a friend before you take them as a friend, you shall know them by their fruits. This is a message that will save you from a lot of pain in your life. This is a recipe from the healing God, our Lord the Messiah. Don't be fooled by the look. Don't be fooled by the names. Don't be fooled by attitude. Don't. The people they claim they 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 they, they act. They act. Don't let them fool you by their act. If I'm wearing the clothes of a priest, does not mean I am a man of God. The Bible says to you, be aware of false teachers who come to you in the clothes of a sheep. So the priest can be a wolf, but not every priest is a wolf. So don't judge by clothing, don't judge by uniform, don't judge by name. If somebody called himself a Christian does not make him a Christian. And this is exactly what happened with Muhammad. He called himself the praised one. Can we praise him for anything? This devilish man. We will praise him for what? For raping children? For splitting a woman alive and she is over the age of 80 by tying her legs into two camels? And yet the Muslim, they say he was sent as a mercy for mankind. A man who enjoyed torture. Who put nails in the eyes of his enemies. My friend, I have no wisdom of me to share with you. But I have a sentence in the front of you, just one, better than all the books in the world. One sentence can bring a lot of right decisions in your life, including choosing who you worship. In order I want to follow a person, whoever that person is, Buddha, Hindu God, Muhammad, Christ, let us examine the fruits. As simple as that. Which means the Messiah, he gave us a rule even to examine him himself. Which one you should follow, Muslims? A criminal? A madman who take a shower with dead dogs and women of blood from period? And garbage, as the Hadith says. And then when they ask him why you are doing that, he says water is always pure. A man who you Muslim claim that he was bewitched, controlled by the devil. A man who himself admit that the shaitan, he command him but to do good. A man who admitted that shaitan, he gave him satanic verses. A man who admitted that he was lost after his own son and he think this is good. A man who taught you to beat your wife. To divorce women as if they are sex toys. Change them every day if you want. Just pay them their wages. A person who says prostitution is okay as long you don't force the girls to do it. And if you do it, Allah is all merciful, forgiven. 
a person who said you can do muta you can rent a woman for one night stand and pay her money for taking off her panty that is the ethic which the God of Moses taught the God of Abraham taught the God of Jacob taught that is the God you are looking for a God who promised you endless penis a penis will never go limp women they have their ass one mile boys in heaven that is God for you so Muslims listen carefully if this is God for you you chosen the devil because I challenge you to show me one of the things I just caught about your God is not what the devil he tried to tempt us with this is not the promise of God this is a temptation of the devil and I want people who they are editing my videos take this part at the end and make it a video by itself and translate it to the Indonesian Muslims for we love them we love all the Muslims and I have a special special message for the Indonesian you Muslim Indonesian can change the whole world by leaving Islam your country will change will become the most beautiful country literally for the mercy and the love of Christ will be with you and then peace will come look at your country look at what those Islamists they do in your country look at the mosque how people go inside the mosque and they are peaceful they get out they are angry they want to burn cars shout scream anger satan the devil you go in peace you leave with war takbir allahu akbar you want to kill everybody in two seconds from their fruits you shall know them my friend not from their speeches unless the speech present the fruits not from their words unless their words is their fruits their action present them sorry about CV book it is a France what does that mean uh, <clears throat> so always be aware of the liars and the liars their best is to deceive you always he deceive you he target you and you know the liar he will not target the the bad ones they will target the good ones they will target always the good ones the bad one is already is bad i mean who care So I want to say thank you for being here. May the Lord bless us all. Keep us wise, smart, vigilant. So nobody can deceive us and nobody can lie to us. And nobody can fool us. And again, I repeat, if a fool like Muhammad can fool you, how fool are you, my friend? If a fool like Muhammad can fool you, remember this statement. How a person like Muhammad can fool you. That's disgusting. Thank you. God bless you. And see you soon again. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And we prove it every day.